Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch that had a relatively short production run from 1999 to 2003, and of those that were built in that period, most were stainless steel. This is the full yellow gold Vacheron Constantin Overseas Chronograph, and it is the first generation. When the Overseas bowed, in 1996, it was designed by Vincent Kaufman and Dino Modolo as a chronometer with three hands and a date. Well, it wasn't until 1999 that a chronograph entered the catalog, and at 40 millimeters, this is the smallest standard overseas chronograph that was ever offered, so it's very agreeable on a smaller wrist. So we're talking 40 millimeters diameter, relatively thin at 12.7 millimeters thick, and if you measure the horn at the end of the case on each side, the distance across the wrist is 52 millimeters. This is the most extensively, laboriously, and intricately hand-finished of any overseas generation, and particularly where the bracelet's concerned, you see where the time and attention and the money was spent. Now we have a little Maltese cross motif on the clamshell that locks this bracelet. You can also see it again, there is a back and forth lock that is the second locking factor, a little slider for this double deployment clasp. So you actually have two locking factors. There's the slider and then there's the clamshell and both have little Maltese crosses on them. Double folding, you can see ceramic, spring-loaded pin snaps were employed to make sure that over time the tolerance of the clamshell remains snappy as the gold cannot wear down the ceramic. So that's why those are there. Again, intricacy. You can see that this conforms perfectly to the case. Dino Modolo and Vincent Kaufman said that their design was drawn from the heritage of Jorg Heisick's 1977 Vacheron 222 integrated bracelet sports watch. So that's where the style comes from, but still it has to be executed. And you can see it has been. Case blends into lugs, blends into bracelet. You can see that the shoulder bevel of the case is transmitted to the shoulders of the links, which are polished outboard. You can see that it tapers when viewed from the top, but it also tapers when viewed from the side, an unusual refinement that you will not find on most Royal Oaks Nautilus and Aquanaut sports watches. In fact, most in integrated bracelet sports watches don't even think about tapering the links in profile only when viewed from the top. And you can see that the links are fitted to create two narrow channels down the center line of the bracelet. Again, intricate is the word. A lot of time was spent designing and finishing here. You can see that there are removable links and that they are fixed in place using screws. So with your jeweler's screwdriver, you can do some sizing. There's also an intermediate link in there in case you find you are in between sizes. Vacheron taking its cues from the best, building this the right way, using screws and bars to fix the bracelet to the case, less likely to come undone than spring bars. Screw down crown, screw down chronograph pushers, 150 meters of water resistance. Once again, you can see the Maltese cross on the crown itself, which has little stubby crown guards. The Maltese cross motif is used again for the bezel, and then you can see it blazing on the dial. The bezel sits proud of the case. You can see the case top and the lug hoods are satinated, and then the bezel has recesses that are satinated with polish across its top. The dial is a silver opaline. You can see outboard there's a little chapter ring that represents the track for the hours as well as the base for reading your seconds and minutes. We have yellow gold hands, yellow gold indices designed to resist oxidation and tarnish over time. We have symmetrical registers. Remember, with the second generation chronograph, the minutes register in big eye fashion was larger than the other two. The generation one featured both the double date of the second generation and the symmetrical registers of the third generation. Real quick, take a look at the loom. Really no shortage here. It is a well-loomed sports watch. Double digit date. It does have a quick set system. The watch does not have hacking. And on the reverse side, you can see they adopted the image of the Italian naval training vessel Amerigo Vespucci because it is said to be among the most beautiful ship-rigged vessels in the world. And you can also see that we have a couple of different finishes here. Polish on the waves and the ship. Then there's chiseling around the ship. Then there's a radial lapping machine sort of satination on the track that reads Vacheron Constantin. And then the Maltese cross motif, again, on the case back, features a circular satination. And underneath that, you can see there's 
a transverse satination. Really quite impressive finishing. We have a Frederic Piguet 1185 chronograph movement in here, made by Frederic Piguet today, known as Manufacture Blanc Pan. It is a high horology, hand finished, five position adjusted, vertical clutch, column wheel, integrated automatic chronograph movement. It was also used for two decades in the Royal Oak chronograph. It is nicely decorated, well adjusted, a unidirectional winder with a 40 hour power reserve and a three hertz beat rate. Thanks to the presence of the column wheel, has a crisp feel and sound to the operation of the chronograph. Thanks to the vertical clutch, there's no extraneous movement or jump when you start the chronograph because a vertical clutch has no extra play like meshing gears do. You can also leave the chrono running full time if you like because the vertical clutch does not create additional wear and tear. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.